Uh, it is an early one, you guys. 5.30 in the morning. We're going to get started. We're heading out to Yawin, an absolutely beautiful place with an incredible waterfall. And it took forever to start today. Yeah, this is a dawn departure. First lights at 5.36, it's 5.32 now, so by the time I get up and going, it's gonna be first light. I'm hoping that I'm not gonna have fog out there where I am going. There's a high chance that I will, though. If I can't land out there, well, <laughs> then my whole day is really messed up. Because I'm doing a dawn just so that I can meet the helicopter at another location by 10 a.m. But if I can get out there and get those guys and come back here, as long as there's not fog here, I'll be good to go. It's kind of like a catch-22. All right, generator, alternator, and aux bus is on. We're heading out at 11,000 feet this morning going out there. Should have no issues getting out of here though. It looks, I mean, I can still see the sky. There's a little bit of patchy fog here and there, but should be an issue. All right, our fuel caps and selectors. I accidentally left my batteries on on this all weekend. So my batteries are getting a little low, but this is backlit, which is pretty cool. Fuel caps and selectors, everything is good. Our controls. I believe our TAW is enabled for now, our switches and instruments. We are 7,100 pounds, so 63 and 74. Flaps are set at 20, indicated 20, and verified at 20. The trim is already set up. Let's go ahead and call up tower. Broke tower November, Tango Echo. Request taxi, yaw one, one POV. Be there, not awake. Good morning. Uh, taxi to runway 17 right. Cross 17 left via the mid taxiway. Backtrack 17 right. And line up, finish light and variable. QNH 1017. Time check approaching 35. And on backtracking 17 right. Uh, make a self runway inspection. Safety officer has not done the runway inspection as yet. Good morning, 1017. Clear to back or cross 17 left for 17 right. Backtrack 17 right. November Tango Echo. So thankfully, we do not have to do dawn departures very often. Once we get up and going, I'll go over the weather with you guys. I just kind of wanted to get out of here right now before any extra fog comes in. And so that I can have my best chance of getting out there, get these guys, get back, because it was kind of all contingent on me leaving at 5.30 in the morning. We'll be able to get out to Yifki this afternoon. Oh no, not this afternoon, in the morning at 10 a.m. so that the helicopter can do his rounding with my passengers that I'm taking to him and be able to still get back today because it's a long ways for him. All right, well, we'll be 50 knots by this tent over here. Buzz will stop on the runway after takeoff. We'll pitch for 85 knots considering our EPL, considering our feather. Cut off, cut off pull off, and shut off. Emergency some masters, crack my door. 536 now, which is first light. I'll go ahead and put it in beta. Someone suggested this. I don't know why I didn't think of it, because with my Kit Fox, it was kind of the same. Put something over the oil cooler, and it heats up really nice and fast. Put it in beta, and it kind of stops the wind from going through the oil coolers, so it can heat up a little bit quicker. All right, ignition, inlet, and lights are done. Harnesses are done. 20 degrees, so it's the same as every day, even at 5.30 in the morning. 13.90, 14.40. November Tango Echo ready for departure. November Tango Echo. And, uh, just confirm, runway is okay. 
Affirmative. No, we're echo. No, we're Runway 17 right, left turn, clear for takeoff. 17 right, left turn, clear for takeoff. No, we echo. Current ignition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses. Checklist is complete. Okay. Torque is set, airspeed is alive. There's 50 and continuing. There's rotate. Up over ITT up to 740, a little bit more. Well, this is actually a lot better than I was expecting. When we came in, there was fog right at the end of the runway, and it's already kind of blown off. The whole valley looks like it's pretty good with just a little bit out there. I think the weather was saying there might be some rain over here in the Bennett Gap area. But overall, this is looking pretty hopeful for getting back in here in about an hour and a half at 7 a.m., I hope. About zero, now that we're up over 100 knots. And now, kind of looking to see what my best option to getting out of the valley is. VFR. There's not really great options. So what I'm going to do is put in my gas at departure, which is my instrument departure. And we're just going to fly it. And then once we're above the clouds, then we'll get out of here safely. That's going to be my best option right now. All right, take a left-hand turn to 117. We'll climb all the way up to either well, 11,000 or 12.8, basically, or 12.6, one or two, I'll have to look. Get out of the Groca Valley. So, because I'm not seeing any ridge tops anywhere. I mean, over here I am, but that doesn't do me much good. Grove Tower, November Tango, Echo departed 4-1, tracking 086 on climb 1-1000, estimating Yaw 117. November Tango, Echo on climb 1-1000, miles, contact Moose B, 123, the small liner, HF 8861, and the second POV. 1 POV, 1239 or 8861, November Tango, Echo. All right, well, let's quickly go through the weather on my climb out while I still have a little bit of internet here. All right, we're looking right here Monday at 6 in the morning. Dawns are always on Mondays. We're starting here at Garoka, and uh, you can see there's a little bit of rain over here, well, forecast, which is right over there. And we're heading all the way out here to that heart right there. So as far as rain... I just confirm that you will be outside of NATO control airspace. Um, that's the plan. I uh, will remain OCK and if unavailable, then I'll contact Morsby for clearance. No, I'm letting go. No, I'm letting go. And uh, yeah, if we're heading out here right at this heart, let's head over here to low clouds. This is really the only thing that concerns me is that it's showing that that area has some low clouds. They're broken, so it's not a full-on thick, thick, where like down here is like white. If it was white over there, I probably wouldn't even be trying this. But because it's kind of broken, we're gonna give it a go. So that's what I'm expecting, getting back into here, back at seven. Let's go back over here to Garoka. Looks like the whole valley is gonna start filling up with fog, potentially, but even Garoka, it looks like it's, whoops, there we go, where did it go? Even Garoka is looking like it's still going to be broken clouds, so there's a good chance that we'll still be able to get in. I mean, we've got 21 knots of wind right here at 8,600 at 5.40 in the morning. That is very rare. I mean, very rare. Okay, now that we're getting up a little bit higher, these clouds might just be touching the ridges, it looks like. Can't really tell. 
I'm going to take off my autopilot and head that way because what it looks like to me is it looks like there's this high overcast, well, a high sort of overcast, and then these clouds are right on the ridges. So that's what it looks like to me. I'm going to go ahead and put in my yaw one and remove all these extra points that were on my instrument approach or instrument departure. Let's bring this open wide. That's what it looks like to me. I'm going to continue heading that way. If I have, if once I get there, what I can do is I can throw my terrain on. There we go. Gives me a better picture of what's going on out here. If it isn't, then I'll just head back over here to Gasa 2 and then be on my way, but we'll see. I'm also seeing all the way across the Ramu Valley. So if for some reason I'm unable to land out at Yawan, I'm coming back here to this green area, the Ramu Valley. That's going to be my best option. Um, if Goroka is going to be fogged in at that point, I don't really know yet. Worst case, I can always come down here to Medang. I've got enough fuel to do that as well. When flying in Papua New Guinea, you always have to have a plan A and B before you even leave. If you don't have that, then you get out here and then you're like, oh shoot, what am I going to do? That's not a good situation to be in. Looking across the valley, it's, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of clouds on all of my ridges. All right, well, I'm actually kind of going more over that way. It's not really what the weather was showing. A little bit of internet left over. Let's see, six o'clock. Put over here. Yeah, that's not at all what the weather's saying. Uh, I hate these days when the weather is like not at all what it's forecasting. It really messes your planning up. <laughs> all right, I'm not seeing any ridges whatsoever in the direction that I need to go. I mean, I see ridges down there, but those aren't the mountains that I'm really concerned about. I need to get over the mountains directly ahead of me. So, what I have as an option is I can climb up to 14,000 feet for my instrument route to go over there. Then I've got to drop from 14,000 feet all the way back down to 6,000 feet. I guess I could come over here, get on the 12.4, but yeah, then it's still 14,000 feet unless I'm broke out. Once I get over top of Denunga, this D-A-Y-D-N. Oh man, yeah. It might just be rain right in front of me, but I cannot tell. On all of these ridge tops here, we've got clouds. It looks clear above. I'm gonna have to call up Morsby for, for uh, going through NADS app. Morsby, one, two, three, nine, November Tango Echo, transfer. And November Tango Echo, Morsby again. Good morning, November Tango Echo. Apologies, two, five miles to the east of Garoko, one, one thousand. Requesting to transit NADS app airspace on climb one for a thousand view weather. And over the Echo, it is clear to transit control airspace. Track group direct DR1. And on climb one four thousand. Contact now to approach on one on eighty six. Passing four zero miles. Over for Tango Echo, cut transit Garoka. Yaw one direct track one one eight decimal six four zero miles now over Mingo. Oh, I'm gonna have to ask him for. Let me see when this one goes in. This one goes in at thirteen thousand feet. Uh, I just have to call him up earlier. I think that's not gonna work for me. One one eight decimal six. We are five one miles from Nadzab right this minute. That's the direct track going over there. It's at 14,000. I mean, I could just head back over that way, but... 
I'm going up to 14 anyway, so you might as well, right? Okay, let's just switch that over here. Let's go over to, um, there we go. All right, let's head back over there and we'll just do that direct track. At least I got 15 knots of tailwind. All right, 12.8. Well, a little more work than I was thinking. Okay, let's do our pitot heats on. We're at five degrees Celsius, which is right about where the freezing levels potentially start for icing. But it does not look like it's that thick. It does not look like it's that rainy. I'll just keep an eye on my wings, though. Here's 13.5, another 500 to go. All right, looks like there's a little bit of rain here, which is I'd rather have rain than just a cloud because rain, especially when it's like eating off the windshield like that, it's probably not gonna be freezing. Not at these levels. I'm three degrees Celsius right now. Starting to get a little bit brighter up here, so that means I'm potentially getting at the top of the clouds, I hope. 200 to go to 14,000. All right, there is approaching 14,000 now. At least we're now safe to get across these mountains. Um, well, I'm hoping that we can get right back down. As long as the weather is what it's forecasting out there, I should have no issues at least getting there and then start my work, way, work my way back down into the valley visually. That, that's the goal. Now we're just connecting into our magenta brick line here. There we go, right here at Oktuk, 14,000, that's what we wanted. We're just entering in on this direct track to Denungit, and then on to basically Wasu at another 14,000. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be breaking out. Once I get out of this little valley and over to the next valley, over top of these dark mountains, in theory, according to what the weather was saying, I should be breaking out and I should be able to get down visually. If not, well, I, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to have to do. Um, I can just, I guess, turn back to Garoka, and, or I can head down the coastline to Medang. I don't have a lot of great options as far as finishing what I want to do. All right, well, let's go ahead and pull our torque on back, and we'll bring it to 1250. Wings are still looking nice and clean. Water's still beating off. There really isn't much rain up here now, so that's good. Heads up approach, no Vampire Tango Echo. Vampire Echo, no Echo approach. No Vampire Tango Echo. Oak took this time one 4,000 direct track for the Nugget Yawin. Estimating Yawin time one one. Um, Tango Echo uh, copied, area Q&A, John 009. John 009, over Tango Echo. Got a couple more hundred feet to go. Okay, well, this is a great time to go over the airstrip chart with you guys. Arrival, oh shoot, this one didn't get the updated charts with it. No, it's all right. The slope is 12%, but touchdown is actually 8%. No, 8.5%. This is a really tight and a short final. Basically, it's like turn final wings level for about two seconds, and then at that point, you're committed to land because there's a huge mountain over here and a huge mountain over here, and then a valley going out this way. So you basically have a couple seconds to make your right-hand turn, get out of there safely. Otherwise, you're committed to land. Last couple times I've been going out there, they've been having issues with animals on the runway, like chickens and dogs, things like that. So I'm hoping that uh, that's not going to be the issue today because I don't want to have to deal with swerving around animals this early in the morning. Yeah, way cloudier than I was expecting. I was expecting this to be clear today because it did not show anything on the weather forecast. Definitely, uh, the weather forecast was 100% wrong today. Well, let's go ahead and put in Wasu here for our next point. 
and I'm just going to track on that because that's going over the widest part of the valley when I get over to the next valley over. And that's going to give me my best option for finding a visual hole to descend down into. To get into Yawin, you can see right here that track. So this valley, you kind of this valley, you can kind of see its shape like this. Yawin is right over here in these mountains. So that's going to give me my best option to maybe come down out here and descend down. I've got a little bit of extra fuel on board today to do just things like this, but not not a lot of extra fuel. Uh, it's if I put my Garoka back in here. I'm landing with 608 pounds, which is about 40 minutes on top of my reserve. I've got my IFR reserve, which is an hour and a half, plus an additional 10 minutes of kind of mucking around fuel. So not a ton of extra fuel to be trying to figure I'm out. I'm going to put the 338 radio. And that's that approach. November Tango Echo. Now crossing the 325 radial, 14,000. Mbatingo Echo, request your estimate, Yawa. That's right, and Yawa, one time, 1 1, no, no Echo. Mbatingo Echo, uh, Roger. And uh, contact must be 123 decimal nine. no contact 8861 or 5565, uh, crossing the 338 radio. Contact tower crossing the 338 radio, so I'm playing Echo. Okay, hey, look at this. I might be breaking out. That is good. Awesome. Autopilot off. I'm head down. Let's remove Wasu. We'll go direct Yaw1. Come out here. We're going to go OBS, runway 150. Got some lightning strikes up that way. They might be up high, they might be down low. I'm not really sure at this point. We're going down to 6,000 feet. Looking up ahead, that's where some of the clouds were saying. We're going to be kind of up, packed up a little bit further up the valley from Yawin. So that's kind of what I'm assuming that these lightning strikes are. They're fairly close, but I think they're up the valley and around the corner. Hoping. Well, let's go ahead and pull my power. There's no point going this fast down. Top forward. There's our 338. Or is the 1239er November Tango Echo? November Tango Echo must be. Good morning. Go ahead. November Tango Echo passing 1 1000 on descent, Yawin estimating Yawin time 1 1. November Tango Echo copy, sorry for the transfer descent. Second area Yawin, no contact with frequency HF 8861 or 5565. 8861-5565, Yawin, November Tango Echo. All right, there is the valley that I need to get into. It looks like it might be sprinkling over there. That is way more work than I was expecting to do this early in the morning. <laughs> it's one thing to have to unload 640 kgs of roofing. But, uh, I'm gonna hopefully fly overhead 6,000 feet, turn back around, come back around, be crossing my ridge line at 4,900 feet, full flaps, quick turn. I'm gonna have a quick descent at first, about 800 feet, 900 feet initially. Once I get kind of stabilized, then it should be around the 650 mark, pretty much the rest of my way in. Our selectors are good, our TAWs will turn off, our VREF, we are 60, about 68, 6,900 feet, or pounds, so 73, but we're gonna add two knots, so 75, because it's an 8% slope. Lights and inlet, pitot heat's off. You have to go around, it's gonna be really early final. Take a right-hand turn out. Uh, it's, it looks like it's raining. 
That's kind of, this is this right here is what the weather I was kind of expecting, but maybe not some rain, because uh, it didn't show anything like that. It just showed some clouds. Okay, fuel selectors are on, brakes are on. We've already talked about that. Prop and harness is good. There's B8861, November Tango Echo in the circuit. Yawin, report after landing. November Tango Echo, reading strength one in the circuit. Yawin, report after landing. November Tango Echo. Okay, now I'm kind of getting my visual on what I'm, where I'm looking. When weather comes in, everything looks different. Okay, I've got some sprinkles, not bad though. It's very, very light mist, I would say. It's not even sprinkles. But if it's like this, then I'm not landing. If it's sprinkling on final, then I can't land, not with, not with water on my windshield. Especially, especially on a sloped runway. That's definitely, our SOPs are, Standard operating procedures does not allow us to land with rain on the windshield on a sloped runway, so I'm not even going to try it. It looks like it is raining. Actually, now it's 500. Kind of, now it's stopping potentially. It doesn't look like it's raining. No, it's not even raining right here. Looks like I have rain over there. Rain at the field, though, is it's non-existent, though. Yeah, it's not raining here. I'll have rain on my base, potentially. I hope. Really hope. Yeah, I've got rain on my base. I don't have rain right here, though. Oh, no, I do have rain right here. Pretty good rain, too. Uh, I'm not seeing very good uh, ahead of me either. I'll give it a couple tries. If it's not, five hundred, it's not worth trying to land with this much. Especially how you can see the water is just not beating off the windshield. Uh, I kind of figured this might ha happen today. I trying to squeeze in a flight like this for your whole day. It just doesn't work, usually. Usually just doesn't work. All right, well, let's do full flaps. Checklist is complete for as far as we can go. We went 4,900 feet over that ridge line, turning final 4,800 if we can. 75 knots, so we're looking for about 85 knots and about 80 knots at the most over this last ridge. 10 knots, so I've got whip and wind coming around in this valley already. All right, it's dropping off a little bit. All right, not raining now. 500. All right, now this is actually looking pretty good. Let's go on around. All right, has had too much rain on my way. Five hundred. All right, well, there's five thousand. Let's give it a go again. Again, if we have to go around, it's just power up twenty degrees, right hand turn immediately up to seven forty on the IT or correction, seven forty on ITT. Go full flaps, checklist is complete. It looks like the rain that was here right when I entered in has actually stopped because it was raining up here and on the base as well and it hasn't now. So I do have a little bit extra fuel for this very reason. So I might as well just use it because I don't want to have to go all the way back and then have to reload all this up and do it on Wednesday is the next time I can do this. Hey, winds are dropping down a little bit less.
All right, this looks better. No rain. We're committed. Not headwind. Five hundred. No animals. Okay, I'm oh, glad that worked. All right, now to unload this stuff. If you wanna see how I'm gonna get home, watch till the end. I'll do a time lapse on how I'm gonna be getting out of here and uh, on my way home for the rest of my day. I can breathe. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, great way to start a day. Great way.